evening and good morning, church. As we gather together for worship this first weekend in the month of May, uh, we do so with a great excitement because we're coming out of Compassion Day. Um, how fitting that we would start our worship of a brand new sermon series based on the book of 2 Corinthians called The God of All Comfort and Compassion that we would start that series by having rolled up our sleeves, gone out into the community, and loved on our neighbors. You'll remember Jesus said the summation of the entire gospel is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, to love our neighbors as ourselves. And that's what we hope to have done this weekend. Love our neighbors, and here we are to express our love back to our God, the God of all comfort and the God of all compassion. The kingdom statement, or the very DNA of who Memorial Park Church is called to be, is that we are to live out the unchanging word to serve an ever-changing world. We learned a number of years ago when we were putting together our strategic plan that no longer were the days of expecting everybody to come to us. Uh, those days, well, those days were just gone. And we needed to get out and show our neighbors that we loved them. And so Compassion Day, was born. We've been doing Compassion Day for years. And even this last weekend, we've had hundreds of people rolling up their sleeves, being the arms and the feet and the hands and the, and the, 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 the heart of Christ, loving people by cutting their yards and planting gardens and fixing steps and washing cars and going to nursing homes and making meals. So many tangible ways just to express the love of Jesus to our neighbors. And so this weekend, we come together in worship. We celebrate not only what God has done through us, but what God has done for us. This God of all comfort and God of all compassion has done so much for us. All that we do is a response back to Him. We all come to Him thirsty. We all come to Him needy. We all come to Him broken. We all come to Him in need of compassion and comfort. And for all who come to Him, you will find that deep calls unto deep. And we have this profound connection, both to our God and to our neighbor, as we love them the way God has loved us. So we're so grateful to have you in worship this morning on this Compassion Day weekend, that we can worship the God of all comfort and compassion together. So my experiences with Compassion Day are um, a couple of different things. I, one time when I was a deacon, we went to an elderly couple's home who needed some yard work done. So they were just getting older and their children lived out of the area. And so we could really help them a lot just by picking up, you know, sticks around their house and they wanted some um, bushes moved. And I actually learned how to edge, which I never knew how to edge before, but just basically do things in the yard that they couldn't do anymore. And they were so, so appreciative to see 15 people pull up at your house to, to help you when you can't really help yourself. And of course, the mom like baked cookies for us and just, you know, wanted to feel like she was helping. So it was just seeing the look on their faces of appreciation for um, the things we can could do to help them. And I'm certainly no, you know, landscape artists or don't know all that much about outdoor things because my husband usually does those things but it was a great experience and they really appreciated it. Most of the other times for Compassion Day I participated in um, were more like on the musical side of things. We would go to nursing homes. Jim Lures and his team um, usually would take a group of us to a couple different nursing homes and it's not that you have to be able to sing or anything. We would normally have large print hymn books and just ask the um, residents, you know, what was their favorite hymn or tell us a story of what this hymn reminds you of and even just sitting next to them and holding their hand and helping them get to the right page number and um, we would sometimes bring maybe, you know, somebody to play the trumpet or somebody to play the trombone or different things like that and they, the look on their faces, they get lonely in the nursing homes and just to have somebody there and caring about them and singing with them was worth it just to, to be there and see the look on their faces. So those were the things that um, I found were the most meaningful and I got more out of it than I put in. But obviously we're all trying to be compassionate every day, but it is a great opportunity to help others around you. You know, every year we have this wonderful opportunity called Compassion Day. 
and it's an opportunity for us to get outside of ourselves and to be of support and help of someone else. Now, every year for, oh, I guess literally the last 12 years or so, I've had the opportunity to participate in Compassion Day, especially with the Confirmands. The Confirmands are typically our ninth graders, and every year we get together and do a project with them and with the elders on session. And the reason we do that is twofold. One, it's an opportunity for our confirmands to spend time with our elders, and it's an opportunity for them to do something together um, in the, uh, the area of service. On one particular year, we were actually on campus here, and we were taking all of the uh, sawdust out of the playground, the children's ministry and preschool playground, and we were putting some new stuff in, and it was a very big job. And there were probably about 30 confirmands in you know, all of the, the session elders. But what was beautiful about that was not only were they working well together, but there were preschool dads who decided to show up. And a lot of those preschool dads, well, they weren't even members here at Memorial Park Church. But to have them thrown in and to do service with the rest of the uh, kids and with the elders was just a spectacular uh, time of unity, of hard work, and a great deal of laughter. So if you think Compassion Day is about service, you were right. But Compassion Day is also about having compassion, and it's about laughter, and it's about being together and taking a burden, a big job, like putting new uh, sawdust down on the playground and making it a joy by doing it together. So what I love most about Compassion Day is we get to see the church in action. We get to see the church being the church. And many times our youth are, are called the future of the church. But I firmly believe that our youth, they are the church right now. And Compassion Day is a great, uh, great time to see our youth be the church. Uh, last year, our uh, confirmation class went down and we served at the Pittsburgh Project, uh, which has been a longtime partner of Memorial Park. And um, we, we helped clean out one of, their, um, one of their sheds that just had uh, a lot of just things in it that just needed organized. And, and it was really inhibiting them from doing uh, effective ministry. And so uh, our students took uh, several hours out of their morning to, to organize the shelves, throw out things that the project didn't need anymore, uh, and to really help set the project up to do uh, effective ministry in the summer uh, for their service camps. And then we actually went back there a couple months later with another team of high schoolers um, and were able to serve with the Pittsburgh Project. Um, but all of that was stemmed from us being able to go during Compassion Day and help get everything prepared for that. Um, but what's great is, for me, what's impacting um, is to see you know, students, especially our high school kids and middle school kids, that kind of have this reputation, kind of nose in the phone, focus kind of on themselves. But Compassion Day really allows them to, to kind of look outside of themselves, put the phones away, um, and focus on others um, and serving others. Um, and so last year our students came back from the Pittsburgh Project after serving and then um, had a lunch and then actually got to share their faith statements. That's kind of become a tradition here on Compassion Day, our confirmation kids share their faith statements. And so just to reflect on this entire day where we see kids talking about their faith, describing what they believe, explaining what they believe, and then going out and living out that faith and serving those um, who, who need to be served. And so I think Compassion Day really encompasses what the Christian life is all about, uh, explaining what we believe, um, and then living out that belief. Um, and so I look forward every single year to Compassion Day to see these things happen, and I look forward to it every single year. One of the joys of what I do is visiting seniors in their home. And on one of those visits, I had uh, the chance to visit an older couple, and we sat out on their sun porch, and they told me how much they loved it. But they were kind of sad because the garden around the sun porch had kind of gone to seed and they weren't able to keep up with it. And their son who lived with them was working and very, very busy and was really beyond the amount of time that he had to spend on it. So when time came to plan for Compassion Day and I was looking for a project for our senior ministry to be involved in, I thought of them and I thought that maybe we could go out there and help tidy up the garden a little bit for them. So we put out the word and we got a team together. And what was what, so sweet about the team was it ended up not just being seniors but being intergenerational. Well, when we first proposed the project to the son, he was a little embarrassed that he hadn't been able to keep up with the yard. 
But after some persuasion, he finally agreed to let us come out. And so we came out on Compassion Day, a whole variety of people, who included some folks that ended up living just around the corner and didn't even know this couple. And they made friends and vowed to come back and visit, which I think they did. And we spent the day tidying up the garden around the sun porch. While doing that, we found two planters that at one time held annuals. So we went out and we got some flowers and we planted those in the little planters beside the door to the sun porch. When we were all done, we invited the couple to come out and see what we had accomplished. They came out and the wife especially was so excited and so moved that she began to cry. Well, we came to be a blessing to them, but what happened is what always happens when the Lord uses you. We were blessed and it was such a beautiful day. And in the end, we were so happy we did it because the wife ended up passing away during the year that followed. You will never be sorry that you share God's love with someone on Compassion Day. We have seen the Lord work through Compassion Day in a number of ways in women's ministries. I would say maybe the, the biggest um, example is the partnership that has formed between the ladies in our church and Living in Liberty. They um, are combined with Repurposed, the store on McKnight Road that um, sells clothing and things and they are almost a completely volunteer run organization. So a few years ago we met the women who were involved in that effort and um, organized a group to go down on Compassion Day and sort through um, the clothes and shoes and things at the at repurposed um, store for the the day and that team had a great time. It was um, honestly just fun work um, but it was also um, impactful because they had bags literally from the floor to the ceiling that needed to be sorted. And our team was able to at least cut through some. We were able to make a dent. After we realized how much work was needed and how many hands were needed, we started um, just sort of an effort here at Memorial Park Church to um, get some women on board to volunteer there more regularly. We had outside groups from other churches come and use our kitchen to make those bulk meals with us so that we can all deliver it down um, together, which is, it's just a neat partnership that started is it just a small little group going on Compassion Day and it's grown to much beyond that. Um, the other piece that I really appreciate is that the, these women at um, Living in Liberty, they, they do look to Memorial Park as one of their partner churches, a church that they can call. So things that they just kind of need along the way, they, they hold meetings, they hold parties, they use our Westminster Hall uh, to do that. Um, and I, I appreciate that we've got a group that is doing such tremendous work in Pittsburgh and they are partnering with Memorial Park Church as something that really was birthed out of um, a, a service day on Compassion Day. And I look forward to seeing um, what the Lord has in store for continuing to develop that. Well, we've been celebrating Compassion Day and the good work that God is doing through God's people. And you know, some people have asked, they've said, hey, can we do this more than once a year? And I'm like, yeah, I'm glad you asked. We can do this more than once a year. And it doesn't have to be a big event that's coordinated by the church, but it can be a daily event, maybe a moment by moment event, as we have eyes to see what God wants us to do, right? So we celebrated Compassion and Compassion Day, but what if, and I'd like to turn this over to Sam Taylor to give us a charge and a message. Thank you, Paul. Wow, good looking, man. Woo. All right, am I? I'm live in the house. All right. Well, thanks, Paul, and thanks, everyone. You're probably picking up on the Compassion Day theme. Um, it was, it was a, yesterday was my first Compassion Day, uh, and it was a joy and an honor to serve alongside so many of you. You did good. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Um, so when it comes to compassion, uh, you know, it's easy for me to think about God's compassion or his love, his grace in very broad and general terms. Um, like, yes, God loves us. He gives us grace. Um, he is a compassionate God. But too often I think of these truths as vague concepts, um, 
rather than tangible and lived realities. Uh, The daily realities of our lives don't happen in abstraction. Rather, our days unfold in very specific and particular ways. So just as we experience uh, specific challenges and pain, whether that's physically, relationally, financially, any number of ways, so God gives each one of us particular grace and compassion. We've just heard these wonderful testimonies of the numerous ways in which particular people uh, received particular grace, whether it was a yard being cleaned up or uh, meals being made and delivered real people's lives were impacted in real time. Uh, And all of these great Compassion Day projects met tangible needs in our neighbors' lives. So most of us probably don't have the capacity to do yard work for our neighbor every single day or host a free car wash in our parking lot every single day. Um, So how do we make every day Compassion Day? Um, I think that the Apostle Paul gives us a great clue in the passage that we read as our call to worship today, where uh, he says to the Corinthians, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. So I think that part of the answer to that question of how do we make everyday Compassion Day lies in recognizing God's particular comfort to us in the face of our particular struggles. When I was 19, um, in the summer after my freshman year of college, I was in a car accident. I should probably actually say that I crashed my car. Um, I was driving way too fast on windy roads in rural Maryland near where I grew up. I took a hard turn, hit a patch of gravel, and spun out of control, and then hit a tree head on. One of the branches came down, shattered the windshield. The car was totaled. I was okay. Um, I only walked away with whiplash and a bruised chest, and that in and of itself is just incredible grace from God. Um, In my life, This car accident uh, served as a real wake-up call. Uh, Leading up to it, I was trying pretty hard to run away from God. Uh, And in the days and weeks that followed, uh, I saw very clearly the painful reality of my own sin. But God met me in that place and in that time. Uh, I began to have a hunger for God's word that could have only been explained as a gift from him. Uh, And then when I got back to college in the fall, some key mentors entered my life who walked with me and pointed me towards Christ. Um, And this series of events uh, during my college years was catalytic in my eventual calling to college ministry. Uh, And I've now been working in college ministry with the CCO for seven years. Uh, And I see some of my colleagues here this morning, which I I wasn't, didn't know you guys were coming, so it's great to see you. Um, So God, uh, he had compassion on me in very specific ways in the midst of particular struggles in my life. I wasn't aware of it at the time, um, but this shaped me in a way that really informed how I would have compassion on others, even to this day. So so what is it for you? Uh, In what particular ways has God had compassion on you? Uh, Perhaps someone offered a listening ear and their, or their presence during a season of grief or loneliness. Maybe a group of people provided meals for you at a time when you needed it, or invited you to join their life group, or someone sat and prayed with you at just the right moment. Whatever your experience, how might that inform how you then have compassion on others, on the people around you? I've found that it's truly a gift to be able to minister to others out of my own experience, and I think that you might find the same. May we all have eyes to see the countless ways that our gracious God has compassion on us. Paul, would you pray for us? Thank you, Sam, for that charge. Amen. Lord God, would you give us eyes to see, ears to hear what it is that you want to do in this world. May your love and compassion be a catalyst to heart change, culture change, and ultimately world change as you transform the world through your people. Lord, so when we see a need, would you help us to ask you and say, Lord, what is it that you want us to do? And if you say, 
pray for them, that we will pray for people and we'll be mindful of that. And if you ask us to act, Lord, that we would act knowing that you will equip those who are called by your purposes. And Lord, if you tell us to wait, Lord, we'll wait and we'll continue to seek you because it's in Jesus' name we pray. God's people said amen.